guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Crusader Kings 2, Eastern Roman Empire. Where we last left off, we were considering mulling over, trying to decide who was going to be our next target. And I think the consensus is that we are going to go for Azerbaijan, which is good. It's going to give us not only two wonderful provinces out on the east coast along the Caspian Sea, <clears throat> which uh, I believe... It's one of the few bodies of water that never has a port. So as much fun as it would be to build a massive Caspian fleet and sail it around and say, this is our sea, it's never going to happen. Uh, but they're fairly worthwhile provinces, 48 and 45. And it will also give us a de jour claim, not a holy war claim, on the Hashemids for their little section of Azerbaijan. So win, win, win we'll be able to uh, pick up some territory off the Seljuks. We'll be able to then be able to freely go to war against the, ha the Hashemids uh, without them calling in their bigger allies, like perhaps the Seljuks. And uh, yeah, it should make life easy for us. Now we can go ahead and unpause the game, set it up to speed three. What we've got to do is just kind of wait for this war to take its course. Um, if we take a look currently, you know, he's raising 90,000 troops, which isn't good. Uh, Adana, thank you. Because we can only do 15 uh, of our vassals, 16, 17 of our own, 18, 19, including my retinue. And then on top of that, we could layer on um, another 3,200 men. So we could conceivably have more men than the Seljuks. I would just as soon wait just a little bit, let this war get itself sorted, and um, basically wait for these guys to blow through their troops. Uh, they haven't really done any of that yet, so we're just going to have to keep an eye on it and make sure we keep ourselves as ready as we possibly can to go to war. Things might change here. Um, what does this little green flag mean? I'm not sure, but obviously uh, my siblings aren't really big fans of me. Uh, Euphrisine here really doesn't like me. Uh, Theodolus surprisingly is, is you know, okay. Certainly not pleased with me, but, but is okay. Let's just pause for a moment. And take a look. We are going to be an adult soon, so that makes life easy. However, uh, it looks like we don't have a guardian, which is a bit of a concern. I wonder how long that has been happening. Because um, we should we should be going to there. And I would assume my brother is still being educated by the same guy. Okay, so for whatever reason, becoming the emperor, perhaps, means that I get myself a new tutor who's going to be... The, the same tutor, because obviously my father cared a lot about me and made sure I got the best education possible for a future emperor. Now, thankfully, uh, like I say, I'm 15, so it won't be too much longer before I actually take the throne. In fact, just a couple of months, 26th of November, 1069, well, 1080. Five. Yeah, so the 26th of November this year, I should have my coronation, and that'll mean we're going to be a real emperor with all the perks and privileges without having to worry about stupid things um, like uh, regencies. And my biggest concern, obviously, is any of these factions, specifically the lower crown authority, these guys getting along all up in my grill and uh, forcing me to change the rules, which is not something we want to do. Uh, first thing we are going to do, though, is set up our council. So that's a good pick. He is landed. Uh, the next landed guy, who is this? Stratijos 15? It's a shame, really, that uh, Fadlanid here is only a measly count. He would be a great marshal. But the bonus that we get, just not going to be enough. So we'll throw Nicophorus here. Why not? Our Skellieros, we will have to go with 
This is a different Nick of Theros, who's actually should be leading my military. Hold on here. Well, why didn't I see him before? He's definitely going to be leading my troops. Dude's a genius when it comes to that kind of thing. Uh, next choice here would be Romanus. So we'll give him a job. Nine. It's not all that great, but we'll go with it. Uh, let's see. Eleven. So, yes. And we can get you scheming right away. And then our Ecclesiarch can be that dude. Who, what are you going to do? Research tech? That doesn't really seem like a good idea. Proselytize. That is probably a good idea. Let's see. Yeah, so we're going to proselytize you there. Perfect. Now, what else do we need to do? We've got vassals who are going to be requiring um, honorary titles. So let's just slide this over. And how's it going, sir? You are, um, hmm. Well, I don't really know if I want to give you the uh, Kuro Platys. That will be quite the honorary title. And you're already an Epipathos as well. Hmm. Perhaps not. Perhaps, perhaps not. Now, let's see. I think, though, what we will do is go to Nikea here, which is quite a big little duchy. And uh, just get you to improve dip diplomatic relations. Uh, nope, that is a different do. But Andronicus of Nikea here is certainly in the lower crown authority. If we can just get him on our side a bit more, it'll be happy days. Uh, what else can we do? We can do some tech. Huzzah! So let's actually, uh, if legalism is what i think it is yes we are gonna go with legalism and we could do one more could we perhaps noble customs just to get that little bonus to the feudal vassal opinion which is going to be very nice to get uh, i think we're going to go with improved keeps and while we're at it why not castle infrastructure as well and we might as well throw money at heavy infantry because heavy infantry is the best kind of infantry no way to actually back that up. Well, maybe another set of training grounds would be good. Getting our morale and levy reinforcement rate and retinue size all increased. That would be a good use of some monies. But I want to keep um, as much as I can for now. The first few years after gaining the crown, why do I keep hitting the alt button? The space bar is what I'm looking for. You've been appointed as my regent. At least you like me. Do Ionius the second? Let's just make sure you're not causing any mischief here. Okay, okay. All right. So unless there's some secret machinations going on, we should be fairly safe about any sort of changes to crown authority, one would hope. We can certainly see the lower the crown authority in the Byzantine Empire, though. It's, um, it's looking to be pretty bad. So Andronicus is getting his, um, well, basically smoke pumped up his ass from my diplomat. Nick of Furious here. We're probably just going to have to bribe outright. And that should get him thinking that, hey, maybe perhaps we don't need to lower the crown authority in the Empire. I'm going to say it did not have the desired effect. Let's try sending a gift to you as well. A lot of these guys, like, you know, minus 20, minus 50, minus 35, we're not going to be improving that. But a little bit of money in a, in a couple of those pockets there might be able to grease enough wheels. For too long, the crown has restricted our historic rights and liberties. The time has come to... With your regent, do Ionius II of the Aegean Islands, among my supporters, you have no choice other than to accept. This is exactly what I was worried about. So now, we can see, we're going from medium crown authority down to low crown authority. And it wouldn't surprise me if we had one more event to put it to minimum. This kind of angers me. For too long, yeah. So now we got no crown authority in the entire empire. Why does this suck? We've gone from, what was it, 15,000 raisable troops to a whopping five. Uh, basically, the war with the Seljuks might not be happening, all because my dear old dad 
had to shuffle off the mortal coil at the ripe young age of 44, um, causing me to have issues. So we can see this guy here, Duolexios, the Commodos family, really, 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 really think that they can be emperor. And judging by the state of this, <laughs> the way things are going, they might have a chance. So what we're going to have to do is at least get another thousand men on the go. And we're going to want to probably keep it as cheap as we can. So while a bunch of archers, hmm, we've got 800 heavy infantry, 600 heavy cavalry, a bunch of uh, horse archers, perhaps, perhaps some standing archers would be a good idea. And that would give us a thousand... Yeah, a thousand heavy infantry, a thousand archers. Let's give it a shot. So, uh, yeah, I guess before going off on epic military adventures, we've got a lot of work to do at home, which sucks. Because, yeah, I mean, basically... We haven't undone all the work that we've already done, and I've had this come up in my practice games, so I kind of know what to do to, to, you know, alleviate the situation. Never been dropped down to only being able to raise 5,000 men, though. That is a concern. Uh, almost a big enough concern to actually visit the Jewish moneylenders and throw some money at a training ground. Because how much are we making a month here? Six. Which will go up once we're done raising and training troops. And we might as well get those guys into the middle stack. So, yeah. Not pleased. Not pleased with the way things have gone. The Regency has ended. I became a Grey Eminence. So, hey, that's helpful. Ah, right. So, 17 diplo diplomacy points. That's pretty darn good. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of vassals sort of back off now and are just like, hey, this guy, he's not as bad as, as people make him out to be. I guess we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and find ourselves a beautiful, wonderful wife to share all these things that we're, we're living through. So basically, let's see if we can find somebody with good stats and decent diplomacy. And somebody who isn't old, obviously. Hmm. Let's see, Gregarious is good. Roth, diligent. This girl's a whole schwack of weird stuff going on. I don't think she's going to be the one. Now, here's a potential wife. Uh, granted, you know, she's still 13, but she's already sitting at 13 diplomacy and 8 across the board except for intrigue, which is pretty good. She's quick, which is going to be helpful. Craven, which I'm not all that keen on, but there's zero chance that my wife is going to be leading troops or anything. Kind, which is good. Zealous, when, eh, you know, we're going to convert her anyway. Patient, which is a handy trait. And of course, content, which is pretty good as well. Although this, this might be the one right here. Strong, ambitious, patient, cynical, and honest. All good traits. Nine learning, 12 diplomacy at age 11. This girl's a keeper. And we get an alliance with the uh, Count of Bar. So, hey, at least we get an alliance out of this. Sure, she's, you know, the daughter of a count. But I'm an emperor, damn it. And I can marry who I damn well please. So send that offer. There's, there's absolutely no way that he can um, he can resist, no doubt. Of course you have, because your daughter is now going to have a wonderful, awesome life. Hmm. What do we want to boost up relatively quickly? I guess we'll go with stewardship, although certainly military is on that list, but um, I don't want to be stuck with an ambition once I get married and I can have the babies. So that's kind of kind of the goal there. It's to get myself an heir as quick as possible. Get him set up so he will inherit inherit, not inherent. 
uh, but inherit at a decent age, get a good education, get him Thrake, so he's got a little bit of prestige and uh, a little bit of uh, experience running a county before he goes off and runs an entire empire. And I guess for, you know, the whole PC crowd, I shouldn't necessarily leave it as a him. Uh, I've had, I've certainly had some very successful female emperors of the Byzantine Empire, so that is a possibility as well. Certainly one of my sisters could wind up coming along, but uh, yeah, probably not. What's the most dangerous faction we've got? Elective succession in the Byzantine Empire. The Patriarch is in on this, is he? Well, that's not good. Um... I'm going to need a new Escalieros, which is unfortunate that we have to go all the way down here. I might just bite the bullet for all the money that it's going to get me because the difference between 8 and 15, pretty big difference. Congratulations, sir. Uh, we are going to have you... Hmm. I don't want my steward to get attacked, but more money is good money, so we'll do that. I guess we could get you training troops too, which... Theoretically, should be pretty helpful in at least getting this up. So that's 10,000 men we can raise emperor-wide. How's that going to handle against the uh, the Seljuks? Seljuks, however you pronounce it. Not well. Um, not, not well at all. They've only basically lost 1,000 men. And how are the Fatimids doing? They've gained a lot of men. So, taking a look at the situation, it might not be a good time to press east. So, we've got a, a few things to look in the west, in the western regions here. There's absolutely no way that you're going to be becoming a vassal of mine. Have you got any daughters? You do not. Does your heir have any daughters? Well, you've got a sister. She's already married, so that doesn't really help. You're the heir to that. Basically, I've got my little brother, you know, Theodolus here. He's probably not at all pleased with the way things have gone. But we're going to need to find some nice lady for him to settle down with and um, work on getting some kind of relation going with some land that we want. Now, the Kingdom of Georgia might not be a good bet, but what about you? Arrange a betrothal with my s brother. You will accept that. Send. All right. So, your heir is Mr. Bald Guy. Mm, 29% chance, 54% being discovered. Not going to go for that just yet. But my thinking is, if we can get rid of him, and then get rid of him too, I guess, is probably, well, 47%, that's not bad. So then get her on the throne, the Duchy of Cartley. Then, when th her kids, who she has with my brother, inherit, we will get an agrofolius on the throne of the kingdom, or on the throne of the Duchy of Cartley, theoretically making it easier to go after um, the king, really. What are you? Ah, I see how that's working. So you are my vassal. Okay. Good, we're getting conversions happening. What about you? Would you convert? No, you wouldn't, would you? Who is your heir then? Oh, nice little daughter. It would have been a huge waste to send my brother to marry the daughter of this count. Working the political machinations to try and get Georgia is good. Are you allied with anybody? If we declare war for... No, we could go for Albania or Semender, but we can't go for Shimaka. So if it was a holy war for Azerbaijan... Nearby Sunni rulers, which probably means uh, this guy. How are you doing? Eh. 
to the most illustrious Basilius Zenobias. The good burghers of Finopolis are barely able to pay their taxes. Our coffers are empty. I humbly ask that you lower the tax rates for your cities. Your humble servant, Mayor Gabriel. Oh, it's okay, Gabriel. Don't worry about it. You're doing a good job. I imagine that's what the flatter and soothing was, is just basically saying, oh, you're doing fine. Don't worry about it. But because I'm so damn charming, it actually works, which is crazy. I love it. All right. Well, I was, I was actually really looking forward to um, having some kind of war here, but it's just not, it's not working out in my favor. And I am a bit concerned if the Seljuks managed to get uh, Syria, which is what I believe they're at war for. Yeah, I mean, if they're able to get Syria, that's going to be a little bit of a concern for all involved. We'll sort it out. We'll sort it out. Nope, oh, let's unpause. I'm happy with my place in life. I can't think of anything I would rather do than just take care of myself and my friends. And of course, our friend Andronicus Ducas here. Uh, I fear for Andronicus' sanity. He has not been himself lately. To help ease his problems, I made his join me in the garden to relax and talk about whatever he needed to talk about. Oh, that's good. He feels less stressed. We're good friends. I would imagine we're friends. We're not. Really? Nope, my only friend is Pelagius here, an eight-year-old. <laughs> Look, when you're running an empire, all you need is an eight-year-old as your friend. Uh, my mission to Nicomedia has so far been a success. Okay, that's good. You should be liking me more. You like me a lot more now. That is very handy. Let's check the factions out. And our dear friend is not a part of any of them. I guess... With the crown laws being down to nothing, he got what he was looking for. So let's check. You, sir, you need some Diplo improving. There we go. And that should alleviate a lot of the problems that we're having. I hope. Uh, let me actually check something here. I just want to see... I know it's crazy. You're the king of Norway? 8,000 men. It's so tempting, right? Like, we could conceivably beat them. And I do conceivably have a claim. A weak claim on the kingdom of Norway. It's tempting to press that, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Well, well let's see here. Uh, rank. Well, let's find someone who's not particularly pleased with me. You. You can educate my daughter. There we go. Or my sister. <laughs> I haven't, haven't played long enough to get those crazy family trees yet. It goes totally against everything that I've set this game up for, but pressing the claim on Norway, something to consider, especially considering we'd be able to sail up there and just own them is, is really the reason why I'm thinking it. Fighting the, fighting the, um, the Muslims over here, that's, that's, you know, a, a bit harder than I was planning, but it is... With Norwegian units, it would be a lot easier to fight those Muslims. That is for sure. Who are you allied to? Nobody! We do have a de jure claim on Malta. And he's not allied with anybody. What kind of troops can you raise? A, a thousand. Well, 1,400. That would be an easy war. I wouldn't have to raise any troops, and I could easily take them. Okay. You know what? We need some sort of conquest. Does your claim on Malta send? There we go. Because we got to do something. 
We'll raise our Imperial garrisons, but we won't we won't worry our vassals with something like this, except of course for their ships. Always worry your vassals for ships. Can I go to the province view? You see, you guys, you lower the crown authority, and then all of a sudden you're fighting each other. This is this is what happens when you guys meddle in the affairs of an empire. Fifty ships gonna be enough? I don't think so. We're gonna need just a few more. Uh, that should be enough. We only need one more, so six more. Should be good. Let's merge those guys together. And we are going to resign from command and or Constantinios. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Definitely take our heavy infantry leader and put him with my retinue. We've got a cavalry leader. And he will probably go on that flank. And then we've got one last guy, an unpredictable Varangian guard. Ivar, welcome aboard. Let's go take an island. And hey, if I'm feeling really generous, I could give the island of Malta to my, uh, my little younger brother who got shafted on the Empire. He needs some land. Might as well make it this. If we do indeed, like, conquer it, conquer it. I'm not exactly sure if this guy will just become my vassal. Or if it'll become my land, because it's a du jour claim. We'll find out. I think he'll just become my vassal. Yeah, make a move. Why not? Your wife is still very much underage. So you might as well sleep with someone your own age. That's right, it's good to be the Basilius. Ah, a peasant revolt. In Galatia. 2,000 troops. I don't suppose any of my vassals want to be super friendly and help me out here, so we will do it the old-fashioned way. And basically everybody in the Empire can probably meet up there and if you're going to walk through the battle go around it instead why would you do that why would you walk right into a battle uh, we're not gonna bother with our island troops we'll just drop those guys down And just march you up that way. And I guess we, that'll take you forever and a day. No, it's, it's going to take those guys any ages to get there, too. And we, if it comes down to requiring 120 men, something's gone very, very wrong. Just make sure everybody's going to be avoiding that fight. Good. Where are you off to now? You're off to that direction. Really, I don't think we're going to need many of our Greek troops to actually pull this off. And in fact, perhaps the do of Nicopharius here, or do Nicopharius, will uh, help out a little bit. Help out a little bit. That's more than enough to end this. I mean, that there might be enough just to uh, hold them in place while the rest of our troops get into position. Oh, no, he decided against it. Yeah, it looks like this rebellion was poorly planned. There we go. Okay, well, that's that for that. We can uh, dismiss the realm levies, although I would imagine... Okay, good. Those, those ships are still there. Yes. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, intrigue. There we go. Prisoners would be you. Unmarried. No kids. 
Won't happen. Uh, we are going to castrate Kalinikos here. Goodbye. Perfect. And you guys, I mean, I should probably just free you, but... No. Prisoners of my father, stay prisoners. One more holding to take, and then Malta will be ours, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Malta is going to be a nice addition. Obviously, it gives us a little jumping off point to get involved further west. Um, this is a bit further west than I had intended to push things, and I mean, if I'm going to take Malta, why not Sicily as well? That's a question to answer later on in life. Certainly not anything we need to answer now. It looks like they've got quite a fleet there. Thankfully, ship combat, not really a thing, although even if it was, we'd be dominating. Perfect. Uh, okay, and Kyra has so far been a success. Wonderful. Offer peace, enforce my demands. And let me see, you are now just my liege, or my vassal. It's a bit of a letdown, but hey, that's fine. Obviously, if I wanted it to be mine, mine, I would have done a holy war. But, uh... Such is life. All right, well, we lucked out on our bastard child because it's a daughter, so the chances of her inheriting are next to nothing. So we're just going to acknowledge her, legitimize the kid, and sure, we'll do that. But, you know what? She's not born in the purple. She has no chance of inheriting. That's fine. If anything, we just get one more pawn to uh, move around the board in marriage alliances. So there you go. That's a horrible way to think of your kids. But, um, you know, medieval politics. Not the world's greatest uh, example of politics, I guess, is where I'm going with that. Elective succession certainly is popular. Um, obviously, some of my vassals are not fans, but even ones that are fans are kind of like, yeah, you know what? We should. We should elect an emperor. You guys know how crazy that is? I mean, obviously, right now, you're like, well, obviously, we should elect the emperor because we've got a bastard daughter who's about to take the throne. Rest easy, my vassals. My wife is a couple years away from maturity, and then we'll start pushing out all the legitimate babies to rule the Byzantine Empire further. However, I think that's going to be a good place to leave the video for now. Certainly did not accomplish or pull off any of the things that I wanted to. But hey, we managed to get Malta. So that's something new. We got ourselves another jumping off point to get involved in the Mediterranean, which I'm a-okay with. And aside from shifting troops from, you know, the middle of the Mediterranean to the Far East Coast, it should work out well for us. Uh, so yeah, on that note, thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.